What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plan. Today we are going to be reviewing a new light and it is the Viper Spectra XS1000. Let's check it out. All right, this light was sent to me by Viper Spectra and this one actually is releasing quite soon. So this is a brand new light that they're offering. Let's get this thing unboxed and kind of see what's inside. All right, so first thing I see when opening the box is the actual light panel itself. So let's get this thing out and kind of check out the side components first. This is the first time I've ever seen the side components kind of come nicely packaged in a little box, which is kind of nice because usually they're kind of loose and flopping around in there. So the first things that kind of pulled out are the actual hanging hardware. And that's like what attaches directly to the light. And then they also include the optional like little rope pulley things, which we see a lot nowadays, which is very nice because you don't have to buy them separately. And then finally, we do have a power cord. And this one does have kind of like a 90 degree angle on it, which is kind of cool and unique. So that's pretty nice. Let's check out the light now. So here is the light panel. It is a nice small square form factor, which I really like. It's very clean and neat. Let's check out the back first and kind of see what's up. Uh, looking at the back, there is a nice name brand Meanwell driver, which is one of those things I always look for on these newer lights, just because you know you're getting good power components and you can trust kind of the efficiencies. Something I really like about the Viper Spectre lights, which I do not see on any other light brands, is the nice like cooling fins. So they almost put like a really nice heat sink on the back of the panel, and this is going to help reduce the heat and make your panel live a lot longer. So it's a really nice feature that's often overlooked by other companies. And then finally on the back, or I guess you would say on the side, they do have a dimming knob. So that's used to kind of reduce the light or increase it. And I love having that on lights. As it is on one of their bigger models that I'm using in a grow tent, I've only got it at 50% and it's just killing it. I mean, it is growing my vegetables really nice. So it's always good to know that you can kind of reduce your wattage based on what you're growing. Taking a look at the front panel, it's like many others. It is using the Samsung LEDs that I always rave about. This one does have a good mix of cool and warm colored ones, along with a few red ones as well. All right, like usual, I like to attach these up to a watt meter and just kind of measure what they are using. And you can see at the very lowest setting, we're using about 19 to 20 watts. After that, we hit about 25% and it's using about 40 something watts, cranking up a little more around like the 50 to 75% area. We're looking at about 80 watts. And then when we crank it all the way, we hit a maximum of 130 watts. And then lastly, I like to just kind of show you the pattern. Again, most of these lights are pretty much square panels, so it shouldn't be too shocking, but here is what it's gonna look like. I did one at full power and one at about half power. I am gonna be entering this light into the grow contest, hopefully, so that way we can see this one versus a bunch of other lights. Well guys, that pretty much sums up this video. I hope you liked it. Remember, I did review kind of the older brother of this light, a little slightly higher wattage one in a little larger unit. And I have a grow diary about that one. If you're kind of curious, how well do they actually grow plants? So definitely stay tuned for that thing because it's been really interesting. As always, may your plants grow strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.